Hello, everyone, and welcome to this clinical research update program, putting a spotlight on systemic mastocytosis, a multidisciplinary look at early diagnosis and management. Systemic mastocytosis is a rare disease characterized by a pathologic accumulation of mast cells. Mast cells are hematopoietic cells from multipotent myeloid progenitor cells. They migrate as precursors to the tissues from bone marrow. SM is a rare disease. It has been estimated that around 1 in 10,000 people is affected by SM. And when you look at all patients with SM, only around 5% are affected by advanced SM, whereas the large majority, 95%, luckily are only affected by non-advanced SM. So what are the key differences between advanced and non-advanced SM? We cannot really, based on symptoms, differentiate advanced versus non-advanced. Patients with uh, uh, non-advanced uh, systemic mastocytosis can have a lot of debilitating symptoms such as from anaphylaxis to flushing to gastrointestinal symptoms and, and to brain fog. Some of these patients, even with indolent disease, will have anaphylaxis with hypotension. And, and I think they really need a good workup for that with an allergist immunologist. In systemic mastocytosis, almost all patients have a mutation in the KIT gene that encodes the KIT protein, a transmembrane tyrosine kinase type 3 receptor, which binds stem cell factor. As you can see at left, this is the wild type kit receptor. And this is where binding of stem cell factor has to occur before you get activation. But in mutant kit, which is most commonly D816V, a substitution of aspartic acid with valine, the receptor dimerizes and becomes constitutively activated. On the right-hand side here, are, are sort of uh, you know, ways to potentially think when you're seeing these patients and they're telling you about these symptoms, you know, is, is this truly a clonal type uh, you know, profile of mastocytosis or non-clonal type where the patient may have something like mast cell activation syndrome? And there may be some clinical features that help you with that. So tryptases is, is probably the best test you can get for these patients to help sort of uh, you know, stratify and, and, and sort of uh, categorize these patients. So a baseline serum tryptase above 20 and with those classic mast cell activation type symptoms really makes you want to think about the diagnosis of mastocytosis and would make you want to think about getting a bone marrow. And when, when you get your bone marrow, we've, we sort of talked about this uh, with Tracy's uh, part of the discussion, you know, you're, you're looking for, for, for various things. You're, you're doing the immunohistochemistry, you're doing the molecular testing um, that's going to help stratify your patients. Karen, what are you doing in your practice? I would measure a tryptase level and kit the 16 v allele burden in blood. And then depending on these uh, values and depending on the clinical symptoms of the patients, I recommend to always perform a bone marrow biopsy. And in addition, maybe also uh, osteodensitometry or uh, an abdominal ultrasound of liver uh, and uh, uh, spleen, and maybe also uh, an MRI or a CT scan. The management of the symptoms is really tailored to the patient, though, so there's no magic wand or formula, but uh, we rely heavily on the mediators that are released, and we have mentioned histamine and tryptase, but I would also mention prostaglandins and leukotrienes that are heavily uh, you know, involved in the symptoms. So I do think that uh, the new era for the treatment of systemic mastocytosis is what we, we have now, the tyrosine kinase inhibitors, whether the one that we have here, uh, and that has been already approved for advanced disease or, uh, you know, any other uh, tyrosine kinase that would address, you know, mutated kid and uh, would be able to decrease the muscle burden and, and the disease.